Welcome back into The Drive with Tim Donnelly here on 99.9 The Fan. Joining us for the first time on, on this uh, the new show, John Shire, head coach, Duke Basketball. Coach, uh, thank you very much for, for taking the time, first of all. And and we'll start with uh, kind of the, the biggest off-season question. Uh, you battled for ACC championships as a, as a player, won some. As a coach, won some. Uh, is there is there any nerves for the future of the ACC with the news that's that's breaking seemingly every day in the, the realignment world? Well, first of all, Tim, congratulations to you. Uh, thanks for having me on. It's great to be with you. Um, and as far as the ACC goes, or you mentioned nerves, I found very quickly from my first day when I was you know named head coach, the amount of change in college basketball, college athletics. Uh, at this point, it's par for the course, and you know I've realized you have to be very flexible, adaptable, and you know really I think we're secure and solid for right now. But I don't think you can say what the future holds. And for us, just continue to take care of business, doing what we're doing, and uh, we'll see what the future holds. But in the moment, it's not about nerves or anything else because you can't control it. There's really nothing, nothing you can do to control it. Is there a way, though, right, because we keep hearing football is driving everything, football and the football media rights are driving everything. When when you look at it, is there a way to make sure basketball doesn't get dragged along to whatever is best for football and college sports? Yeah, I mean, of course. You know, it's – look, college basketball, we have uh, an amazing product. I think there's been uh, – you know, with some of the change that can happen with uh, conference realignment – or just the nature of the sport where there's a lot of uh, change in roster turnover. Uh, you know, look, in, in, in March, we have an amazing thing with March Madness. We have to continue to figure out how to make that one of the best sporting events in the world, but also get more attention earlier in the season to college basketball. And, of course, football is – a lot of this is built around that. Uh, but I can say with what, you know, the, the brand that we have as far as Duke basketball goes and – you know, the, the history of the ACC, you can't tell me that doesn't mean something. And, and just just is the 96-team tournament, as far as making that the premier event that it is, the, the, the NCAA tournament, 96, does that seem as crazy to you as it does to me? It's I'm not there yet in favor of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know a lot of my colleagues are uh, in favor to do it. I'm just such a, you know, I've grown up the whole way. You know, I didn't feel there's a big jump when we went to 68 teams. I think there was a great thing adding in those playing games on Tuesday and Wednesday. I love it the way it is now, but I'm also, I, I, I think it's foolish to say that it just has to stay this way forever without looking at ways it can, can improve. We're talking with John Shire, Duke basketball head coach here on The Drive on 99.9 The Fan. Uh, I know you said that kind of since you took over, the uncertainty is, has been constant. Does uh, does part of you say, like, you know, Coach K had 40-plus years of just ACC dominance. Why why is all this happening as soon as I show up? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, you know, I, I more I laugh about it more than anything. You know, I, I, I've had many conversations with Coach K, you know, over these two years. Well, that's what's it's been – over two years right since he's you know made the announcement we went through that year together when when he was head coach I was the coach in waiting and uh you know 99 percent of things for 40 years I could say hey this issue came up what would you do about this or how do you feel about this uh and seemingly it, it feels like more and more issues uh he didn't experience which is crazy to think about the most experienced coach really ever with his, you know, what he's done, USA Basketball, Army, and then Duke. Uh, so it's more comical to me than anything. <laughs> uh, well, going along those lines, year number two for you, you had more more of an on-ramp. You mentioned you were coaching waiting there for a while. But what's the biggest difference from, from your experience having, you know, sat in the head coach seat once before and now getting ready to do it again? Well, I think that the, the biggest difference reflecting back on last year was the fact we didn't have – we had, you know, one one player returning that had, you know, real game experience in Jerry Roach, you know, second one in Jalen Blakes, who was here as a freshman. And so that has never happened in our program before. We've had three, four players returning, but never two. And so not only are you figuring out your own path as a head coach, but also you're doing it with a team full of guys that are learning what it means to, you know, play for Duke basketball and be Duke basketball. 
And so I've, I'm, I'm proud of the fact we have eight players returning. Uh, we have four, you know, really good freshmen coming in. That doesn't qualify you to get any wins. We have a lot of work to do and can't assume anything. But I do think there's a, there's a, a core to what we've started in year one that can translate and carry over to year two. That, that voice you hear is John Shire, Duke basketball head coach, joining us here on 99.9 The Fan on, on the Heaster Automotive Group hotline. Uh, John, I'm, I'm a – Kind of playing into what you just said, I'm a sucker for NBA mock drafts. I'm, I like refresh them. <laughs> I refresh them every day as if somehow, like you know, uh, uh, lottery picks gonna become number one overall or, or vice versa. Um, but I do see Flip and I see Tyrese Proctor on a lot of those first rounders. Uh, what's the the pitch, or how'd you get you get them to come back on campus so you have some more of that that veteran uh, presence? Well, I, I, look, those mock drafts are, are great, and you know we tell <laughs> our guys fun. it's point, fun. It's it's fun, and may, maybe fun for you or fun for you know my you know brother in law who can look at them. <laughs> but you know for for our guys, it can be it can be poison. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know one of the things they both made incredibly mature decisions, and like you said, Tim, they, you don't see that very often where Tyrese. Uh, you know, it probably was projected as an early second round pick last year, you know, and obviously there can be wiggle room once you're in that range either way. Uh, but he felt like he needed another year to become more ready. He didn't want to just be in the NBA. He wanted to stay there for a long time. He, w- he wanted to be ready to make an impact immediately. And so coming back for a year, having a chance to lead our team and to take the next step was incredibly mature on his part. And then obviously with Flip, he was going to be a first-round pick, but he had, you know, double hip surgery this offseason. Uh, he felt there was more work to be done. Uh, he wanted to be ready as well. And I give them both a ton of credit uh, for making this decision, and I think it's a great thing for college basketball. And and one of the guys that's going to be tasked with helping them make that next step, as, as well as the, the younger guys and, and everyone else on the team, uh, you hired Emmanuel Dildy to be one of your, your assistants. Uh, could be a shock, I guess, to, to some fans to see someone that didn't play for Duke on, on the sideline to go along with, with Coach Lucas, who you brought in last year. I saw, you know, uh, Emil has the wedding and everybody's there. You got the brotherhood picture. You're in the nice Duke blue suit. Uh, I'm sure you looked at the, you know, the, the, the Duke alumni. What was it about Emmanuel Dildy and what is it about kind of your philosophy that lets you go outside of that lineage? Well, it, it started with a, a great deal of thought and understanding the history of our program and you know really we've had like we have amazing people in the brotherhood and was fortunate to bring on a guy will avery you know a month before and will you know took one of the two new spots that ncaa allowed teams to have and getting will back a former lottery pick and you know really had two amazing years at duke it's great to have him and to add emmanuel you know he's I've known him for some time. We've built up a great relationship. He's from Chicago originally, and he's had 15 years of college coaching experience, starting at Kennedy King College, worked his way up all the way to Northwestern, Oklahoma. Uh, so I think the, the, the background and the coaching experience on the floor that he has, to me, was very valuable. I think he fits in with our group that we have, and you know, it's a combination of having different perspective and experience, but also keeping the brotherhood strong and that's what you know chris carowell will avery uh myself you know i played and have coached you this is year 15 for me and you know as i think back to coach k you know he hired guys outside of the brotherhood uh fortunately he built up such a great rapport with former players that played for him that's a special thing that we've had and again i always want to continue to have that uh but emmanuel has been a great addition and uh, it's been a great start uh, to the summer with him. Speaking of uh, you know things that that Coach K didn't have to deal with, and even you know still fairly new all across the country, uh, the name, image, and likeness stuff, right? With the, every recruiting window open, I know the twenty twenty five class, your contact window just just opened. Um, how often does it happen, and, and how do you respond when an athlete kind of hints that it's it's going to the biggest or the highest bidder uh, when it comes to off off the court money that they can make? Well, just the reality of it, Tim, is if it's about, you know, the highest bidder or what it be, is that that's happened to us, Duke's not in the place for you. It just isn't. You know, we're not, that, that's not, you know, what we're about. Uh, it's about more than that for us. Can you profit off your name, image, and likeness? Absolutely. We're, we've, you know, we're fortunate to have the brand that we do and the exposure that our guys get. 
you'll have as much of an opportunity for that as anything. But to say if it's just about that, uh, Duke's not going to be the spot for you. Just not. Has has anything opened your eyes, right? Like, a, a, I don't know, a player driving up in a car and you just can't imagine, like, a, I don't know, Plumlee doing that or someone back from, from your day? Has has there been a moment where you're like, wow, things things have changed because, you know, we, we were borrowing our parents' Corollas or whatever it is? <laughs> yeah, not uh, – there has been one moment, there's probably been a hundred, you know, of how things have changed even since we've played. And that was just, you know, I came in, what, 17 years ago. Uh, it's changed dramatically. Uh, but I, honestly, I think it's all, you know, uh, for, not all, most of it's for for the good. You know, we were talking yesterday, you, you used to have barnstorming. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but you could, you know, after your senior year of college, you could go barnstorming. Mm-hmm. They stay in North Carolina and bring some gear and sell it. And, you know, it's funny, like, why could seniors do that, but not juniors? <laughs> you know, like some of the rules that we've had, it just, you know, it hasn't made sense. And so overall, we're, we're, we're headed in the right direction. But, you know, you have to have, you know, rules that are enforced and, you know, transparency and where everybody's playing the same uh, level playing field. John Shire, Duke head basketball coach, connecting with us here on The Drive. Uh, coach, before we let you go, and, and thank you for taking the time, um, I, I saw some comments you made about some of your freshman guards, McCain and Foster. Uh, you used the term serious, right, like first in, last out style comments. Now, uh, I played college football, so I know coaches sometimes get diabolical. Was there, a, was there any coaching through the media there happening where you're praising the young guys but also letting the vets know, like, hey, why are our freshmen first in, last out? We have, we have some guys that should, should know this a bit better. No, it was. There's no hidden message there. You know, our upperclassmen worked their butts off too. I, I think the fact that to have freshmen that are that mature with their with their work ethic, we haven't had necessarily, and that's that's been it's been a different feeling. You know, you can ask our upperclassmen; they would say the same thing. And as a credit to, not I mentioned the freshman guards, but also T.J. Powers, Sean Stewart. Those guys, excuse me, those guys have been in as well, and. Uh, so all credit to them. No hidden messages, at least not on that one. Maybe maybe a different time. Uh, but we've had, you know, a really hungry team, and they've heard me say over and over again, we can't assume. And they've really taken that to heart and done a great job this summer. Well, well, well that's how we'll end it, Coach. If you ever do have some coaching through the media that you want to do, if, <laughs> yeah. if, there's, if you think the best method for them to hear it is maybe through, through a, a radio show or a podcast, YouTube, we're here for you, all right? I knew I knew I was coming on here this morning. I'm glad we could come to this arrangement. All right. It's, it's, it's a deal. Perfect. Thanks, Coach. Really appreciate your time. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate you.